What is going on guys, welcome to your 10th Java game development tutorial and in this tutorial we're going to be building a couple more methods necessary to play our animation. Now let's go ahead and build a method right now and what this is going to do is get animations current scene aka the image and I know I use the terms image and scene interchangeably but they are interchangeable so I mean when I say scene it's image so don't get confused and I got an itch on my ear so hold on Oh, yeah, right there. Oh, that felt amazing. Pretty gross, huh? And now let's go ahead and build this method. Public synchronized. It's going to return an image. And let's put get image, just like that. If you want to name it something different, go ahead. Feel free. But now what do we want to do in here? Let's first of all put if scenes dot size equals zero then what do we want to do if there's nothing in our array list then let's go ahead and return a null nice little check and else what do you want to do if you actually have something in your scenes well if we actually have something in there then let's go ahead whoa easy caps lock return get scene and remember we're going to be building this method next get scene and what this get scene is going to do is take scene index dot pick just like that so now what do we have uh, else return get scene index dot pick what this is going to do is get your current scene or the current picture that you're on and it's going to return that picture of here so I know that you don't know what this picture variable is, but we're going to be building a class for that. So it's kind of weird building stuff that you don't have built already, but let's clear that up for you right now. And now everything is going to start coming together in this method right here. So private one scene, because remember I told you I'm going to make an inner class right after this called one scene. And what this method is going to do is get the scene. What scene? well we're gonna be it's gonna get a scene according to the index so for example let me scroll up here if there are five pictures in this array list right here then the second image is gonna be index two or actually one but that's irrelevant and what this is gonna do when you put get scene it's simply gonna return the scene so return one scene object scenes dot get x where the heck did that stuff come from so what this is going to do is return the element of that array list and if we're saying all right so the only thing that really is holding me from understanding all this all and why is this underlined oh i see so the only thing really that we're missing is this private inner class, this one scene right here. And once I build this, everything is going to make sense, trust me. So let's add a comment. So private inner class, um, aka scenes are going to be object. And remember I told you, each scene is in essence its own object. So let's go ahead and make private class, and I'm going to name it one scene. So that's why all these are on the line, and now, bam. So we're going to make a class called one scene. So whenever we create an image, it's actually going to be an object of this class, one scene. So we need two different things. So let me see if I already made it for you guys up here. Yep, right here. Whenever we created a new scene, we had to give it a picture and a total time. So we need to make sure this class called one scene has two variables, an image pick a picture and a long end time a total time that you want that picture to run so we have two variables in here what picture do you want is your object and how long do you want that picture to stay on the screen for before moving to the next one so we're only gonna have one method in here and that's gonna be the constructor so public one scene and for the parameters let's just use the same parameters image pick and long end time right there 
and again I told you what these did before no need to explain it again so let's just go ahead and set each object's picker picker each object's pick is equal to the pick we passed in and each object's end time is equal to end time so bam how easy is that so in essence let's see if we can walk you through this all see what we're gonna do we're actually we're gonna be um well I'll walk you through this guys one last time we made a new class called animation to pretty much handle our animations the first thing it does is of course call it constructor and it pretty much starts everything new gives you a brand new animation we now need a way to add scenes or images to our animation so we made this method called add scene what it does is take the total time and add it each picture is gonna have a certain amount of time it needs to run for and when you add up all those times we get the total time that our animation should run and how do we add these pictures to our array list we use scenes dot this add method this add method is built in method and this is how you add things to an array list so after this we are the start method right here starts your animation from the beginning by setting everything equal to zero and this ensures that your animation starts at the beginning now after this here is how you change scenes what you do is take all the movie time is the sum of all the time that passed from the last update so it's gonna take how much time passed from the last update alright add that to the movie time and if your movie time is greater than that total time up here then you want your animation to start over again so now uh, what this while does right here is well we built this get scene later which I'll explain later pretty much says alright when do we want to move to the next scene so let's go ahead and we're making this uh, method right here if we ever need to get our images again get scene and it pretty much gets the image um, based on the index get scene um, this is pretty much all based on this private inner class it gets the scene based on or gets the picture based on what index you told it to in your array list and this private inner class takes each image that you give it and gives it a variable called the pick aka the image and also the length of time you want it to run for and it pretty much creates an object for each picture or scene you pass into it and again picture scene image are all the same thing so this pretty much allows us to convert that picture to an object and we're saying alright why would we even want to create or convert a picture to an object because then it has like attributes like uh, the name and the time it runs for and they're just useful stuff so that's it for this class we are done with our animation class in our next tutorial we're going to be building this Bucky class right here so it's going to be awesome Thank you guys for watching. Uh, that's all I got for you for this tutorial. So again, thank you. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you next time.